I want to demonstrate a few searching tips that will help you in Matrix. When you hover over search, you can go directly to a specific property type of your choosing. Otherwise, you can use cross property type. Cross property type would allow you to pick multiple property types and do them all at one time instead of separately. I would still recommend going directly to your property type and searching that way, but that's your option. Next involves date ranges, such as sold dates. Whenever you pick on solds, we assume you don't want all solds, but most recent solds, and in this case, 180 days back. You can also change this and make it like 90 days back or a full year back. You can even use the calendar. The calendar would just allow you to pick your date ranges. You could even type in your date range here, such as 1, 1, 15. If I leave it like this, that means exactly January 1st of 2015. Nothing more or nothing less. I could come in here and put a dash and do today's date. And now I get everything from January 1st, 2015 to today. I could also do something very easy and put a plus sign and that means January 1st to today because that's everything greater than that date. If I come over here on price and if I just type in 125, that means I want exactly $125,000. Nothing more, nothing less. If I put a plus sign after it, that means 125,000 and greater. If I say 125 minus, that just means everything that's 125,000 and below. Or if I do 175, that's everything between 125,000 and 175,000. Same thing carries over into bedrooms. If I say three bedrooms, that means exactly three bedrooms, no more, no less. If I put a plus sign, that means three or more bedrooms. If I say three minus means three or less, and three to five means between three, four, or five bedrooms. Same thing goes with bathrooms, year built, square feet. In fact, if you just hover over one of these question marks, it explains exactly how I just demonstrated for you, and it reminds you if you need further help with this. Next, whenever you have an option to pick multiple items, You'll notice that when I click on it, the others go away. By holding down the control button, I can select multiple items. By holding down the control button, I can deselect them if I made a mistake. You'll also notice that some of these fields have a little box that I can click on that opens up and allows me to search for them this way. Or I can just type in as little information that I know about that field, pick it, and then add it and then hit the OK. And what else I could do here is just simply type in the numbers or items that I know. Now when it comes to street names something like a state route is always tricky to search for. So here if I do an asterisk 202 for example I will get everything that ends with 202. So whether the listing agent spelled it out as state route 202 or shortened it by ST period RT period or SR202, I will find it either way. So the asterisk just means I don't know what it starts with, but I do know it ends with 202. Now another example here, if I hit the more button, 202 in Huber Heights could also be called Old Troy. So by doing both ways, now I'm finding it as State Route 202 or Old Troy Pike. Another example of this is First Street. First Street could be spelled F-I-R-S-T or it could also be 1-S-T. So that way I'm searching it either way that the listing agent had typed it in. 
Next, if I said maple asterisk, and now my asterisk is at the end, this means that I know it starts with maple, I just don't know what it ends with. So if I look at my results, you'll notice now I have maple wood, maple dale, maple ton, and even maple. But it just means I don't know what it ends with, but it does start with maple. If I put my asterisk at the beginning, now it means it contains maple, and I'm not sure what it starts with or ends with, but somewhere in the middle is maple. So if I look at my results, now I get sugar maple and maple whatever out there, but that way I'm getting it either way. And if you hover over the question mark here too, this also spells it out or reminds you of how I just demonstrated this for you. Another tip involves the and, or, or not. If I say to car and hold down the control and pick attached and I have it on or, I could get a two car or an attached garage. I could also get a one car garage in this as long as it's attached. I could also get a detached garage with this example as long as it's two car. But if I come down here and change it to and, now it's got to be both a two car and attached garage. And if I change it to or, now it's not a two car or not an attached garage. The most common way to search is using the or button. And that's why you'll notice all these examples here always start with or unless you want to change it to make it a little bit more advanced option there. Next, if there's a field that you want to search by and you notice it's not in that list, if you come down here to additional fields, you can add or remove fields to this list. And they populate underneath here. As you can see, I've already added several fields. So by hitting Add Remove, I can just come down this list and look for something that I like to add. And then pick it. And then hit Add and it drops it to the bottom and then I can move it up and rearrange it how I like it in my order. And then when I hit back it will be in my list down here until I remove it. So it is permanently in this list until I remove that field. And then finally I want to show you something that involves this count down here at the bottom. Keep your eye on the count down here. As I pick fields and information here, you're going to notice it recounts on the fly. So as soon as I type in information here, you'll notice it recalculates for me. So if I accidentally made a mistake and typed in something odd, it went straight to zero and I know exactly where I made my mistake. I hope these little tips will help you. Please look forward to other videos and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.